was a little bit late getting here today. I think he stayed up too late last night. So, so thankfully it was cloudy and we didn't need the early morning sun because we're getting a late start on our shooting. So since he wasn't here, but I wanted to go ahead and tackle this garden bed, I started doing some things this morning and I shot a little bit of video so you guys can see what it looked like before I did anything. I've done a little bit of primping and pruning and then later tonight I'm going to come out and show you what it looks like with my lanterns, part of my QVC line. Um, I'll put a link below to them, but I'll make sure that you guys see what it looks like after it's all primped, all purty. I've removed what things I want to remove with the exception of probably the tall flocks because I'm going to let it do its thing and then I'll remove it. But you'll see what it looks like, how much uh, more tailored, how much cleaner, how much organized, um, and really how much more satisfying it is to me. So make sure that you stay tuned for that at the end. Well, Stuart and Goose are going to be joining me a little bit later because we are going to shoot me working in this garden bed back here that I was talking about yesterday and how I didn't want my my garden, my plants, all sorts of things to boss me. So I am wrangling this garden bed into shape and I am going to be doing that this afternoon and Stuart will show and, and help demonstrate what I'm doing here and what I mean and why. But I wanted to give you guys a look beforehand of what it looks like. Because you can see that the boxwood needs to be trimmed, the tithonia is here, there are other things that are making it look less than tailored and more cluttered. And because I wanted to go ahead and get a head start on some of my work while it was cool this morning and before Stuart could get here, I wanted to go ahead and film this before for you. You can see there that I've already pruned one of the boxwood and I have transplanted a tithonia. So the rest of this work I think I will do in the company of Stuart and probably Goose and hopefully you. Uh, but for right now, I just wanted to give you a little preview before I proceed. And then Stuart shows you more of what I am doing and how it will look when I'm finished. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Well, come on in, Stuart. You can help Goose and me in the garden because today I am yanking some things out. I talked yesterday or day before yesterday in my Wednesday walkabout that I came home really re-energized and I was able to look at my garden through a new lens and I mentioned that I wish this Tithonia weren't here because it blocked my Arborvita and it made the entire garden just not look as clean and crisp as I wanted it to look. And But I said, oh, I'm going to wait until it blooms and then I'll yank it out of here. Well, why not just go ahead and do it? Any plant where you don't want it is kind of a weed. And even though I want it to be here for the pollinators, trying to move it, yanking it out and trying to move it, I think is a gardening risk worth taking, especially on a beautiful day like today when it's really cloudy and overcast. I've already done two of them. So the other reason I wanted to do it was I keep 
this is kind of a maybe a funny little tip but in my phone under my notes app and if you use a different app let me know that's my question number one but in my notes app I have a category of things that I call superpowers and they are things related to failings uh, character failings that I have myself that I know I need a reminder to make me be more productive and one of those superpowers Goose are you hiding back there come here baby girl come here everybody say hello your mama and daddy just loved being able to see you on the video yesterday so you say hello to everybody Goo she's such a good helper she's such a good helper um, but one of those superpowers for me is to do what I call identify the impediment. And what that is, is I need to get whatever it is out of the way that is keeping me from realizing the potential of a space or keeping me from doing something that I'm procrastinating on or that I don't want to do. And in this case, the impediment I identified was this massive tithonia that I thought looked kind of weedy here. And it kept me from working on this flower bed because I just didn't like the way it looked. And so I wasn't ever gonna, I finally realized this was the impediment. I wasn't ever gonna get this bed to look the way I wanted it to look unless I yanked it out and I moved it. And I am going to do that. And it's a gardening risk worth taking because if it dies where I plant it, then it is something that I am willing to tolerate to get the look which is more important to me right now, of this garden bed. So that would be my tip, is to identify the impediment. And if you have an example of identifying an impediment in your life right now, whether in the home, in the office, or in your garden, that's keeping you from self-actualizing or reaching your full level of productivity or your garden's full beauty, then let me know what that is. I would love to know some of your examples. So I am removing this First of all, this tithonia. Now I'm also removing some other plants. So here are five plants that I am either yanking out or just removing um, either temporarily or permanently in my garden that maybe you want to consider doing right now too, or maybe you feel like you need to permission to do it. I don't know. If you're like me, and I think you are, sometimes we feel like we need permission to go ahead and do something we're just itching to do, but we sometimes think it's kind of wasteful or it might be a risky move, and so we don't go ahead and do it. So here are five things that are, that are out of here. They're just out of here in my garden. So number one is this tithonia. I planted these from seed earlier in the season and I thought they were the dwarf variety they put out these wonderful orange flowers Stuart maybe we can put a close-up of one um, that's already blooming but I, I I wanted it primarily for the pollinators but this was not a dwarf variety it was just huge and you can see here how it's got it's a beautiful flower, but it's got kind of weedy foliage, and it's definitely obstructing the view and the architectural form of this arbor vita be behind it. So what I'm doing is getting as much of this root ball as I can, and the root ball wasn't huge. I watered it really, really, really well before I removed it, but Stuart, if you can show how already I have a crisper, cleaner line here stronger forms, which is what I was going for. Now what I'm doing is I'm not just relegating these to the compost pile. What I'm doing is I am planting them. It may work, it may not, but I am planting them in this Italian trough that never, I say Italian trough, it's half of a wine barrel trough, which to me kind of signifies um, Italy, but it, it, it just never performed up to my expectations. I had some nasturtiums in here. I had some calendula. The calendula took forever really to bloom, but this soil is pretty good. Yes, there's still, I had mint in here, so there's still some mint roots and things. I really don't care. I am still going to put it in here, and if it grows, then that is just wonderful. And if it doesn't, then no, uh, you know, no guts, no glory. So I'm gonna put it in here 
And again, I would not be doing this if it were 100 degrees today, but it, we have a high of maybe 88, which is unbelievable for us. It's overcast. We might even get a little bit of a drizzle. And so I'm, I'm gonna do this. Now I'm gonna give it just a tiny little bit of food. This is a slow, slow release, which may not necessarily be appropriate, but again, this is all kind of an experiment. And then, of course, I don't have my garden gloves with me, but I do have my back brace on, you guys, because I moved, Stuart, if you don't mind showing them, I moved those Silverado sage plants back to where they belong, and they were a little bit heavy, so I put on my back brace. So, now I'm going to position this and I, again, I watered it really, really well before I dug it up. This was the largest one. There are two others in here that are smaller, but I'm hoping that what they'll do is end up kind of supporting themselves. So this is my number one plant that I'm yanking out, Tithonia. I'm gonna give it a good water. I'll also, if it does work, I'll love the way these orange blooms look with this Rudbeckia behind it. So that is number one, and I am going to trellis this. I've got some bamboo stakes in here, which I will secure, and it will support all of these. And I'm thinking that they just might adapt to their new home. Again, Hashtag a gardening risk worth taking. If you've got a gardening risk that you've taken that worked out for you, then by all means, share it. So that's my number one plant that I'm yanking out. Number two, I've already done. I got a head start on it without you guys here. Before I left, I showed you that I had some tomato plants in quadrant number one of the potage and that they had some spider mite. And I sprayed them before I left and I did what I could. But when I got home, the spider mite was pretty, pretty rampant and I didn't want it to spread to the surrounding boxwood. So I went ahead and even though they were still laden with tomatoes, I went ahead and this is my number two plant that I yanked out that's out of here. And that is all of these tomatoes. So I've put them here on a tarp because I'm gonna remove all of the green ones and the red ones because I certainly don't wanna waste them and I'll bring them inside. I'll put them in a brown paper bag to finish ripening. And then I actually have a couple of other tomato plants in other areas of the garden that have volunteered and I still have those that I know will grow up and produce into the fall. So I feel like I'm not being too wasteful. This stuff will not go in the compost pile after I remove all of the fruit. It will just go into my trash can because again, it's diseased. So this is my number two plant that I would recommend just going ahead and pulling out now. And that's anything that is really, really pest riddled and you don't think you can keep it under control because yank it out now. Uh, don't let the plants boss you because you don't want it to spread to other parts of your garden. Okay, here is another maybe kind of surprising plant that I am going to, these, these two I would say were kind of temporary plants, um, just annuals that I'm yanking out. But the next three are plants that I am going to pretty much tem um, permanently remove from my garden. So let's come this way. And Stuart, I think we're getting a little drizzle. I love it. Let me take this off. Now, it may be surprising to you because I have waxed poetic about how I think this is a beautiful plant, and I still do. And this is this common tall phlox that's kind of this purpley pink color. And even though it's beautiful and it looks pretty right now, I've decided that I'm really tired of constantly having to cut it back in the spring so it's not so tall. Plus, as all of you guys know, it is very prone to powdery mildew and there are other varieties that I can plant in its stead that really don't have that kind of problem. 
or more likely I may not replant it at all because I've got other plants like this uh, little Miss Figgy in the foreground that's just beautiful that will continue to grow even though it's a dwarf size and so I may not plant it with anything plus I transplanted over here some more of this Rudbeckia so that next year I have two really massive clumps of it to frame other um, to frame this garden bed so now let me show you two other plants that was number three i'm going to remove it all across the back it comes out very easily from the roots and i'll just stay on top of it and keep yanking it out so it doesn't come back next year and now kind of hurriedly stuart before it starts really raining come this way and we're just gonna come over here. So this, I'm embarrassed to even show you, this is just appalling. Um, I had some work done on this trellis. I told you about my problem with Virginia creeper and trumpet vine, and sadly, I can't completely eradicate those because they're just too pernicious and they're on my neighbor's side. And by the way, I'm not throwing this neighbor under the bus because all of this was here before they moved in, so they're probably as frustrated with it as I. But in the past, I had here, this was a beautiful constant spry rose, and I loved it. And it was gorgeous until this Chinese snowball viburnum grew up and mature, and now it's just providing way too much shade. This is a decision point because this Chinese snowball viburnum provides me far more beauty, seasons of bloom. It's far less high maintenance than this rose. And so this rose, in addition to the fact that I just discovered when I had the time to finally look back in this corner, it too has rose rosette. So I'm going to completely dig out this constant spry rose. Sadly, I'm gonna thank it for its service. It served me well, but now it's diseased and it's out of here and I need a lot better air circulation for whatever decides to grow back in here. Or again, more likely, I just won't plant anything because I want negative space. So it's out of here and in comes more room, more airflow and more negative space. Okay, the next thing. I do love it. I really do love the scent of lemon balm. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's, the scent is heavenly, but as we all know, it can be kind of invasive. And it's, it goes to seed and it's become kind of invasive back in here, along with my other nasty invasive residents, like this trumpet vine that I'm gonna have to do something about to get rid of. I may have to put, um, put something on there that's a little bit stronger than I normally use. But I am going to remove, I digress, this would be my number five plant that is out of here. And that is this lemon balm. I'm going to remove it from here. I'll continue to remove it as it goes to seed and more comes up. I will either use it in the kitchen at that point or I more than likely will put it relegated into a separate container where I can really keep an eye on it, where it can behave and where it doesn't boss me around. So that's another thing that I'm gonna remove permanently from this bed, use it in a different way, in a different space. The other thing is, is it tends to get kind of buggy. Miraculously, it's not buggy right now, but it has that potential. So I would rather just have clear negative space in here with a lot better airflow and so that is my number five plant that's out of here so in summation two things were kind of annuals that I'm moving temporarily the tithonia and my cherry tomatoes they are out of here for different reasons I am going to go ahead and pull out that tall phlox Ultimately, I will either find something or nothing to replace it, but I'll be happy because it's gonna be lower maintenance and that's what I'm all about right now. In addition to the constant spry rose and the lemon balm, which are also permanently, um, permanently dismissed from my garden. So let me know in the comments below what you find um, that the impediment that you have to remove to make you more produ productive, but also let me know what things may be out of there in your own garden. 
Well, it doesn't look as fabulous as it did at this same time last year for a number of different reasons, but at least it is much better kept. It is, I think, a little bit nicer and tidier looking. And at this point, I'm just thinking about fall. So by fall, hopefully all of this will have grown back out. You can see that I, after I yanked out a bunch of plants, I top dressed everything with some beautiful compost from my compost bin. I took out some planters that were in here. I'll show you uh, which ones I removed a little bit later. But I think overall it looks a lot crisper, a lot cleaner. Those are a couple of my QVC lanterns in here. And while it doesn't look the way I want it to look, it definitely has the potential that I want it to have going into fall. So there you go, my, uh, my little makeover and the final result of what a bed looks like after I yanked out a bunch of plants. Well, if you've held on to the end, here is your fashion epilogue, as unextraordinary as it is. Still, you guys always seem to want to know what I'm wearing. Number one, what I'm wearing today is a lifesaver for me, or more accurately, it's a back saver. I love these back braces, and I'm getting ready to move those two large Silverado sages back into position. So, I will put a link that you can click on. Stuart, can we put one above that people can click on to know, uh, so you can go directly directly to which kind of back brace that I use. And I really, really love this. Um, the t-shirt I have on is from Buffalo Brewing Company. I got this at a Garden Riders convention not too long ago. We were in Buffalo, an incredibly beautiful city. It was my first time there. So I brought back a little souvenir from the brewing company, or more accurately, my, my hubs got it for me. My britches came from Goodwill. They're a brand called Murray Murray, just a really off brand. Uh, but like I say, you can always typically find some good kind of cargo pants or something like that at Goodwill. I like these. They work for me. I have three pair that I've gotten at Goodwill and they're all kind of this dark khaki color that I like. My sandals are these that I've showed you a million times before. I think they're called Funky Monkey. They're form-fitting sandals. I love them because they slide on and off and they are permanently linked below. So you can go down and find those. Parenthetically, here's a little tip. When I wash them, I put them in the dishwasher. That way, any kind of fungal problems or pests or anything like that, or, or just um, really dug in mud, I can wash them off in my dishwasher. If you put yours in your dishwasher, however, you might want to buy a size up because they actually shrink a little bit, even though they're rubber. So those are three things. Now I also, oh, and my earrings are just some old ones that my sister gave me years ago. I love hoops. I have a whole a whole wardrobe of nothing but hoop earrings. Now, this is something that I decided, it, it, I am also wearing it today, and I get asked a million times what kind of foundation I wear, what kind of skincare I, I wear, and I, at the wedding, a lot of young people were asking me about this. So I'm just gonna tell you, I will put swipe up links, Stuart. We'll put swipe up links below. You can actually get this at two different places. You can get it through the swipe up link, or if you go to the doctor's office where I purchase it, um, I believe if you give them my name, you get a 20% discount on anything that's in the Zio skincare line. I absolutely love this stuff. And here are my go-tos as a foundation. It's actually not even a foundation. They are both sunscreens. So what I do is I mix a little bit of this Smart Tone Broad Spectrum Sunscreen. It's got SPF 50 and it just somehow magically corrects to your skin tone. And then I mix it. I just put a little dollop on the back of my hand and I mix a little dollop with this Zio Skincare Sunscreen and Primer, which I absolutely adore. And I mix the two of them together and I use this as a foundation. So it's, it, it's really, it's, it's kind of a, a 
triple play. I'm using it as a foundation. It's a sunscreen and this one is also a primer. So then I really don't use a foundation on top of it. And it does that layering sunscreen thing that I like so much. And then I use um, Neutrogena liquid sunscreen all over my neck and my decollete. So you guys, I promise you will love these. They last a long time. They are every bit worth the price. So Stuart, let's remember to put some links above.